Pamela, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, and this would be the pros for closed management and closed reduction and cast management. No conflicts or disclosures. What I have learned, I uh, appreciate talking after Dr. Burke. This would be a point counterpoint. Too young, maybe there's anesthetic risk, unstable narrow safe zone. Watch out for AVN. Internet is slow here also. But laterally and very proximally displaced as Dr. Eastwood has showed us, watch out for re-dislocation. And if you fail with a closed reduction, don't try another one, proceed with an open reduction. So my algorithm is, as we see, birth to six months, I try my best to get treated with a harness of some type or a brace. For me, open reductions for the older, older children, four to 18, 24 months, I would consider a closed reduction. Of course, there's always overlap. So this is a six week old post, three weeks in Pavlik, right hip is Orlani positive. It is sublux laterally and posteriorly. The left hip remains Ortolani negative, a problem for me with the pavlic and is dislocated on the longitudinal view and also posteriorly on the transverse view. So at this stage, we have laterally subluxed and laterally dislocated hips, and I would consider this patient to, to proceed with a closed reduction, and I would wait until the patient is about four months of age or maybe 11, 12 pounds, and then I tried my closed reduction. And when I do my reduction, everything depends on my feel of stability and reduction. It's the most important item during the procedure. Everything is what you see in front of you. The rest to me just confirms what we find. So in this particular pot child, we put the patient to sleep and reduction of what we felt clinically was a stable reduction in both hips is confirmed with radiographs. And we see the pre, here we see the post, uh, I like to write the Hilgenreiner's line on the x-ray as best as we can. We see the heads below Hilgenreiner's line, so both hips in this situation are reduced. The anterior posterior, or the arthrogram issue is, I think, controversial in smaller hips. Be careful. Don't put too much dye in the hips because I have destabilized the hip, as have others. If you put a little too much dye in the small hip, that's sort of a precarious reduction. I really like the post-reduction 3D imaging in this particular case, it confirms to me that we can see things very nicely as we do here. We can see the femoral head and the acetabulum very nicely. The reductions are confirmed and we proceed then with further observation and cast changes down the line. So this is a five-month-old failed pavlik on the left side. As we see on the x-rays in the OR, uh, sometimes detail is not that obvious. And we have to outline and try our best with the imaging available to look at the femoral heads and these uh, particular hips, both after we draw Hilgenreiner's line are reduced. And we uh, have a comfortable feeling that this can be managed with a cast application and with or without your arthrogram. So the seat, hips are seated, I applied the cast but you'll notice when we applied the cast, the cast are in flexion, abduction, but this cast is in air, I would say. I put it on myself because there's too much extra rotation. These patients have a lot of femoral antiversion. So here's my post-cast x-ray, and very much to our dismay, the hip is no longer reduced, but it is externally rotated and dislocated. So at that time, we put the hip back in at the same setting, with internal rotation and flexion, and a reduction that we lost when we changed the cast was regained. So internal rotation and flexion, I think, is very important to me in stabilizing this very younger hip. Again, postoperatively, after the uh, patient awakes, we get the MRI. I don't have availability for MRI in my OR suite, uh, but the 3D axial view here is very satisfying to me that we have a stable situation 
follow up five weeks later, cast change again, hips very nicely seated. And then we watch the hips follow up is very important with close reduction, one year post-op and five years patients come along very nicely. So the follow-up again is very, very important. I'm a little tighter hip, eight months old, Ortolani negative in the clinic, put the patient to sleep, Galeazzi sign is present. You can see the short leg, close reduction is possible at 50 degrees of abduction, a narrow safe zone. Uh, what is the safe zone? I think as Ramsey and McEwen were mentioned before, very important to me to dis- figure out how much abduction before I dissipate and how much abduction before I'm too tight. A wide safe zone is a very, very good thing to find when you do this. It's got to be going to be a success. Where is if you have the narrow safe zone, be careful as to how much you abduct the hip. So the Ramsey McEwen safe zone, I think, is very helpful. If you have a safe zone, you can get a little more abduction uh, with an adductor tenotomy. So we've done the adductor tenotomy. We now do the arthrogram in this older patient. It's not perfect, but there is a reasonable uh, reduction of the head, the labor in the capsule, kind of a smudgy dipole reduction. Okay, we thought so. We get the arthrogram and we put on the cast. Then we take our 3D and much to our dismay, sometimes on the 3D picture, we are not reduced, but we are displaced significantly posteriorly. The cast should be immediately reduced, removed. Uh, Make your decision on whether or not you want to try it again. If you thought you had it, I would try it again. Follow up in this patient is very important to make sure AVN doesn't uh, occur. So here we look, we're developing very nicely. We splint lapse at nighttime. Follow up again is very, very critical until the dysplasia has resolved. What about the older patient, 13 months of age, but the hip is not that proximally displaced. Can this be closed reduced? Uh, I think it can. Again, the whole decision for me is made by what I feel when the patient's asleep. In this particular case, the patient had a nice safe zone of about 35 degrees. And so I was very comfortable with my uh, sense of reduction. I confirmed that with the arthrogram. Excuse me. And the arthrogram in this particular case shows a very satisfactory reduction, uh, very narrow, very narrow safe zone. Uh, excuse me, a very wide safe zone, but a very good arthrogram. So this to me is something that's going to work probably three casts. Again, the 3D imaging shows us the quality reduction of the left hip, uh, which is very, very comforting that this is going to be a satisfactory outcome. Follow-up for this patient is very important after casting. Here we are at one year and we'll follow this patient until the dysplasia resolves or we treat the patient for dysplasia. Here's a public patient we get in trouble with, a four-month-old, bilaterally dislocated. We think we can get it. We should be able to get it. After all, we're orthopedic surgeons. So we attempt to close reduction. It's not perfect. The left hip is too lateral and going a little proximal. So we try anyway, and we persist with our cast. And uh, we then risk the chance of pushing the safe zone into too much abduction and circulatory problems develop. And we get into the situation where we immobilize too much. So every time we get a chat, the chat is coming across my screen every time this is happening, every time a chat comes up, sorry. So we we immobilize in too much abduction and we end up pushing the hip beyond the limits it can take. And so AVN is a definite concern in this situation, which did occur. So this patient then followed up with us at 15 months of age. We saw him for the first time. And we now have a significant biological problem. Treatment recommendations for this will have to include as we grow on and follow up with trochanteric overgrowth and a probable leg length inequality. So here we have an older patient who presents in a year, very proximally displaced, bilateral problems. Uh, this to me is not a patient who is a good candidate for closed reduction. Uh, it's going to be one of those problems that we fail because we have two hips dislocated, both very proximal, and this should be done with an open reduction. So follow-up is very important, seven months of age, and after close reduction, you see the patient's 18 months, you could take various ways of treating this. I like to very early with this amount of subluxation before age two do a PFO. I think it works very well in this situation. 
confirmer reduction and appropriate PFO. An older patient, two years of age, orderly positive, orderly positive in the clinic. This patient reduces very nicely after casting the follow-up. You know you're going to do a secondary procedure. Be prepared to do it and do it when you see a certain amount of remodeling that hasn't occurred. In this situation, you're going to treat the deformity of the acetabulum. And again, with the Pemberton, as Dr. Burke showed us, reduces this and treats this very nicely. So what about uh, my results or my technique as far as outcome giving correct patient selection? What's the, my ability to maintain reduction and keep my AVN rate low? 18% uh, by Eastwood in 2016 has been published. Turgeson, 14%. I'm at about 17%. And that's over several decades of practice. My AVN has been very, very low, for, even for type 1. Um, my follow-up is not quite as long as Turgeson's. Um, I do uh, plan to do secondary procedures, follow the patients you have to do it, do it. That is the secondary procedure. So the longstanding algorithm for me for the four to 24 months child, I have been and continue to be very pro for close reduction of DDH. And again, thank you, Woody, for having the chance to participate.